Hey everyone, it's Alicia Tune, and welcome back to Not Fest Heavy Conversations. Today I'm joined by Stay Puff Mello, Corey Westbrook, and Tori Kravitz. How's everybody doing? Welcome back. Good. It's a Monday. Good. We're all dragging ass. It's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> We're how many coffees in? We've all forgotten to eat. It's a glorious day. But what makes That's it even spirit. better? So we're about to talk some metal, so let's dive in. Ozzy Osbourne performed at the 2022 NFL kickoff halftime show, and NBC only aired seconds of the performance. I personally wasn't able to tune in, but my feed was absolutely being flooded with how many people noticed there were, was barely anything streamed. And I'm talking a full halftime performance went down here, and so many people were excited to see it. So for everyone here in the chat who also happened to be in that same scenario, what were your original reactions when you either saw live or found out how little was actually presented to fans. Tori, let's start with you. Yeah, I mean, my first impression is like they hyped us up so much, right? Saying, oh, Ozzy, halftime show. So I'm ready to go, revved and ready. And I don't even watch sports, which I'll get to that in a second. But, you know, my first impression is it's incredibly disrespectful, mostly considering like what Ozzy has been through recently, like his health complications. And this was only his second performance since having a major surgery. So you know, regardless of the the intricacies of a halftime show in the NFL and all of that, like, give him a little bit of respect that he, you know, got up there on stage. I, wasn't he being like held up basically being there and um, he just, he deserved a little bit more respect. But my question being, because I don't watch sports, so I'm going to need someone else to chime in. Like, <laughs> was this really intentional and was this really a jab at rock and metal? Or is this like, did this happen to other genres and other artists? in sports performances. That was something that ran through my mind as well because I've only tuned up probably two halftime shows my whole life because I'm in that same boat as you, Tori. Like I'm not super yeah. into sports unless it is wrestling. So I kind of had that same thought run through my mind, but at the same time, I didn't know, is this intentional because it's Aussie? Is it intentional because it is something that's heavier, rock slash metal? I, I really couldn't wrap my head around it. So uh, Corey and Stay Puff, what were your thoughts on everything? If you could chime in on a, a little answer for both Tori and myself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Corey, I could go first uh, if that's cool. Go for it. So I don't know whether it was just someone pissed off that Ozzy said that he was done with the States and going to the UK to spend his final days or whatever. And just like, no, fuck that guy, like L.A. do or die, whatever. I, I we, we don't know. Um, I also don't know if it was something like if I, I haven't seen the full performance, so I don't know if it was like, you know, sometimes Ozzy's voice can be very hit or miss given his age and how long he's been going through. I don't know if it was something along that, but like at the Commonwealth Games, he sounded great considering like what Tori said, everything that he's been through. Right. So we were talking last week about, you know, kind of this how like, oh, it's a big old thing. And like with Stranger Things and uh, Thor, like the fourth Thor movie like metal is kind of back in the forefront of everybody's mind but I think this kind of shows still how much we have to go in like our little sphere to kind of get the mainstream recognition and shit like that because I mean certainly over the last 20 years or so I'm sure that there are only people that remember Ozzy from the Osbournes or the reality TV show or just like the fact that he's a you know he he bumbles his words a little bit and he curses a lot right so I don't I don't know. It's really tough for me because I agree with Tori, like he should get his respect and they did hype it up. And it did sound like if you're set, telling people that you're going to have a halftime show, I would expect that they show, you would show a halftime show, even if it's two songs. Right. Like, I know it's not the Super Bowl and all that other stuff, but 15 seconds to go in to hear some like mindless sports stats garbage about the game or whatever on the first NFL game of the season. Is, is is really it's really kind of shitty for me honestly because like Ozzy's been through so much he is the godfather of our genre and this was like a big return to form to him especially since he lives in LA and everything like that right now so I don't really know again I don't watch any NFL kind of hate football a little bit I'm a hockey dude myself and they don't do any of that stuff like they don't do any performances or panache or you know pageantry or anything like that unless it's like an all-star game or the championships right I think the biggest thing to me was just the bullshit that kind of came with it like if you are going to advertise that you're going to show this then just show it it doesn't make any sense to me but Corey what was your take on it all oh no it was complete bullshit that's like the only way to really sum it up because like as Tori pointed out he's been through a lot as John pointed out he is the godfather of an entire 
sector of music literally touched not millions but most likely billions of lives in his career Mm. and to do that in the end is bullshit because of who he is and what he means to everybody and like john said i don't know if this is somebody who's upset that he's leaving the u.s i don't know if it's somebody who's upset because it's metal um i don't know what it was but imagine if this was like j-lo or madonna or somebody could you imagine they'd be losing their any lives. of those artists being cut away from at any point and they're not being like some sort of nuclear level explosion it would not happen <laughs> it would not happen like i'm pretty sure if j-lo found out she got cut away from the entirety of la would just burn it would just it on fire there would be it and so uh one thing i'm going to applaud is that he's being pretty chill with all of this and like he's letting us get riled up for him um and <laughs> rightfully so <laughs> oh i got his back Corey. I oh got yeah him. we will all throw we all the street <laughs> um, but no it was it's not right it was completely wrong and we do still have a long way to go on mainstream acceptance of metal whether that was the issue or you know whether it was political because of him leaving the u.s any of those things could have been it, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what the reasons were because it was a disservice to the fans and it was a disservice to him and his memory, his legacy, his legend, like everything that is him, it was a disservice to literally millions of people. So it doesn't matter what your reasons are. Well put, drop Pamela. Exactly, drop that mic hard, Corey. <laughs> I only have a pen. Drop My it. mic is expensive. I'm not <laughs> dropping that. <laughs> Drop pen. No, I'm I'm with the panel across the board on this one. And Ozzy, if you're watching, we got your back. Now, guys, we're go- going to go into our next segment, which is our favorite new track of the week. Of course, it can be a brand new track that was just dropped or something that you just happen to be loving at the moment. So Stay Puff, what are you spinning? So I am obsessed with the new album from a band called uh, An Abstract Illusion. They released an album this past Friday. I can't name a track because they're all like six, seven, even 15 minutes long in there. It's one of those albums that there you don't name a track. It's like just a full experience start to finish because you don't know when one track has gone into another because it's just an album experience. And oh, cool. they okay. they like there's so much in there that they do there's like uh amazing like blues noodling it kind of is like progressive death metal but then they sneak like a lo-fi hip-hop track in one of the songs for like somehow i don't know uh but they're really 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 cool band it's just their second album and i just i cannot stop spinning it just like i put it on on my headphones at night around around this time in like the room like this get everything all dim and dark and then just (laughs) disappear in into this world that they weave because it's just and it's, it's so good, Alicia. I'm sold. I'm absolutely sold. Anytime that a band can like turn style or kind of uh, Abbey Road something and let that stuff intertwine perfectly, I'm so for that. So no, that's awesome. Tori, how about you? Ooh, so mine, I'm a bit of a sucker for like goth rock. So the 69 Eyes released an EP and I was all for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the song off the EP that I liked the most was Call Me Snake. Um, I mean, if you like 69 Eyes to begin with, like, it's very true to everything that they do. Like, they have their sound, they have their niche, and they just stick to it. So if you like Lost Boys or Never Say Die, like, this is very much in the same realm. But it's, like, it's slick, it's sexy, it's gothy, but also, like, I want to jam and, like, dance at the same time. <laughs> um, so, like, I'm ready to put my shades on, my motorcycle jacket with, like, a vampire in the passenger seat and go for a drive. Like, that's the vibe. Yeah, it's about the time to do it, too. About the time of year to start doing that, too. I'm noticing a trend. This is only my second time on the Heavy Conversation, but I just keep choosing spooky goth music. I think I have a niche. That can be your gimmick. We're here for it. We really are. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Anytime. I mean, for me, the Devil Wears Prada have a new record called Color Decay. It's their eighth album, and I have been spinning their track time over and over. It's really fun seeing a lot of kind of pop inspirations in metal lately, even something as simple as a truly hooky melody that's a little bit more upbeat. And um, This track has a really cool vocal pattern that's fun to follow. It's super anthemic, but mostly I love how the lyricism, even though at, at Point Blank could come across really dark, they are a Christian band, and the lyricism in this whole thing about spirituality and different roads you 
can take. It, it's really cool for me to see that kind of yin yang duality of it all. So definitely check out the newest stuff from The Devil Wears Prada. And now I'm going to let Corey take it away and tell me what she's been into. Well, I'm going to also, I'm going to agree with John on that Abstract Illusion album. That album, oh, <laughs> like just, just, oh. it gets the full Italian hands. It is so good. <laughs> And the it chef's so kiss too. Mwah. Yeah. Mwah. Yes, my mama would be very proud of that album. Actually, no, she wouldn't. She would hate every second of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, an album that I've been spinning a lot lately is from the band Moonraker. It's called The Forest. And when you hear that name and hear that album title, you're going to be wrong on what you think it is. It's good old school skate punk from the like Los Angeles area. It is fantastic. I ordered the Coke bottle green vinyl. Um, it was a band camp roulette pick. I freaking love that game. That is my favorite game in the whole wide world. You have so much passion um, for it. I love I it. I do. <laughs> I do. I love that game so much. Uh, and then, oh God, what was the other one that I was listening to? Now I'm blanking on it. Um, neither Moth nor Rust is the album title. John, what what band is this? Hanging Garden. There we go. I wanted to say Hangman's Chair. That was not the right band. Hanging yes. Garden, neither Moth nor Rust. I finally got my vinyl in my hands yesterday. So that has been my other one that I have been spinning. And that's another one where it's just, you're going to get lost in the album. You're going to put it on and you're going to reach the end of the album and you're going to be like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and just flip that back over to side A. And we're just going to start this journey again because that was horrifying and delightful at the same time. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you got the uh, the band name because I remember the song title and the album title. I did not remember the name of the yeah, band. I'm like, but... I know it's got the word hang in it, but it's not Hangman's Chair. That's not yeah. the right one. No, no, no worse. But, Hanging yeah. Garden. The worst is when that happens to you and you're like mid-conversation, you know deep down how much you know that entire name. And it's like right at the tip of your tongue and you're hoping that by the time the person's on the other end done their conversation, it's there. And most of the time, I'm sure we all get that. So. Yeah. And you're like Googling the lyrics like, please, of please. like the song. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. what I'm talking about. I swear I do this professionally, right? sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Well, next up is going to be a tour or festival, which was just announced that we are hyped for. I feel like just kind of like with last week as well, it's been a little bit slower for festivals. So I'm really curious to see what everyone picks up here. So Tori, kick it off. Sure. So Loathe announced a tour a few days ago um, and they are going to be playing like the album everybody wants to hear front to back. Um, I let it in and it took everything. Like that is the album. They're just making fans happy with this tour. So that was just announced a few days ago full us um that's a sick one and john how about you so i'm gonna cheat for the second week in a row and not have something that was recently announced but something i'm very eagerly stoked for which is the bay strikes back tour with testament exodus and dark angel on it um I the we know that this tour was being chased by COVID in early 2020, and all of the members from all of those bands had some really, really horrific times when they caught the illness and everything like that. And the fact that two years later, they're able to pick everything back up and get it out there and start it over again and be like, no. We're finishing this fucking thing. We're taking it to the States. We're going to go out and do it and give everybody a thrashy good time. Sounds really great. And I've seen Testament a bunch, but I've never seen them headline a set. I have only seen them as openers for bands like Motorhead and Judas Priest or Slayer or someone like that, right? So I'm very, very excited to see a co-headlining set between them and Exodus. That's awesome. And Corey, your pick. So it's a tour that I'm excited for in concept, but they have one fatal flaw. And anybody who's ever been on heavy conversations or any stream with me knows what that fatal flaw is. They're skipping Oregon. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to actually shout out Machine Head right now for their small town tour that they just announced because props to them for going to other markets. Like as somebody who gets skipped a lot, like a lot, a lot. You guys hear no, me like about we it mentioned all it. the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It. It's nice to see a lot of these towns that it's like, where the hell is that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Machine Head, for actually going to where your fans are instead of just sticking to Seattle and LA and like all of the big, big ones. It's like, okay, yeah, you're going to sell out those shows pretty easily because it's a massive city, but a lot of your fans aren't going to be able to make it. So massive shout out to them for that tour. 
That's awesome. I think my pick, Destroy Boys, are on tour right now, and they're going to be in nice. Toronto. Just bring in their sweet brand of a witchy pop punk to us, and uh, I just really want to see them. I'm hoping to catch up with them. Of course, Open Mouth, Open Heart last year was one of my favorite records that dropped, so I think just seeing it live finally and the attitude and badassness that they bring to the table is just going to be a treat, so I can't wait to see them finally and jam out to some tracks that I love. It's going to be a good week ahead for live music for sure. But okay, that's, destroyed by rules. They're so they're good. Great. They're I know so we. I, I think we both had them on our shows like last year a couple of times. So just the fact that now we get to see everyone and all these bands we're kind of mentioning right now on tour finally, it's just it's so nice. We love it. <laughs> But I want to say thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. And of course, my fantastic panel of Stay Puff, Mello, Corey Westbrook, and Tori Kravitz. I've been Alicia Toot, and we will all see you next week right here on Heavy Conversations. Bye, everybody.